Suppression of emotions and imagination. Those are two key aspects of when we talk about magic and manifestation. You know, our emotions is a compass, you know, to for us to, to feel and be guided by what, you know, we we find uh, to feel good, you know, what, what we feel bring us, you know, joy. And again, this aspect of emotions, like somebody brought up a strong point, like say for instance, if a, if a mama does something like, like grab a dog and throw it 10 feet in, you know, in the air because it was about to attack her, her baby or whatever, you know, that, that, that's the energy of emotion. Like that's the emotion aspect that kicked in the energy in motion you know, where she wasn't even thinking about anything, you know what I'm saying? And nor did logic, you know, logic wasn't allowed to come in and say, oh man, you can't throw a dog 10 feet in the air to save your baby. That's not logical. You know, it was emotions. It was like, oh, I'm gonna save my baby. Throw that shit. And that's what, you know, a lot of, again, uh, powers that be, whatever we wanna call this, you know, external aspect, the little contrast in this reality you know, AKA uh, the government, all these different things, but that's why they suppress emotions. And that's why, again, all these uh, X-Men movies and things of that nature is about, you know, superheroes suppressing their emotions or suppressing their powers or, you know, are bowing down to humanity in some way, form or fashion. You know, you see it in Hancock, you know, like say, you know, save our system, you know, uh, Wakanda, Black Panther, working, you know, save our system, you know, working with the CIA and stuff like that, you know, it's to subtly plug that into the subconscious. But again, like, the, it's very important for us to uh, tap into our emotions and have emotional intelligence. And again, and be tapped into our imagination, you know, because to be able to visualize something is also connected to feeling it as well, you know like visualizing something that, you know, has already manifested. And when you visualize it, you know, you'll feel it. Like, you know, visualizing being on the beach, you know, you're throwing your back a Corona, or you're throwing your back some green tea, or you're smoking a little herb, whatever it is for you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, this shit feels so good. Like, you could feel it, you know, just from seeing it in your mind's eye, you know? It's all connected to emotions, again, and, and imagination It's very key. And hence why, you know, again, the moon is connected to the aspect of quote unquote magic because it strongly connects with the emotional aspect. You know, when those waters move, you know, that's moving those emotions. You know, the water, uh, the water aspect is again, intuition, emotions, you know, the divine feminine aspect, you know. And hence why, again, I talked about satellite, the stone crystal satellite, and how it has sodium in it. And sodium, AKA, uh, you know, with salt, uh, sodium is to, you know, stabilize the water in the body, AKA stabilize the emotional aspect, you know, balance out the emotions. You know, but it, again, with any and all things, you know, it's about embracing the wholeness of our being, you know, whether it's the quote unquote negative emotions to the positive, they all serve a purpose, you know. And I did the video on on that aspect of like sitting there and inviting certain emotions, like constantly working with yourself, you know, having that inner dialogue. Like I, I invite all negative emotions that I may have suppressed in the past, I invite you all up. Like, you know, come forward, anger, come forward, you know, whatever emotions that I've been suppressing, like, I want to allow for it to be expressed, you know? Just by saying that and doing that as an exercise, is, you know, and getting the habitual nature of doing that to help you, you know, tap into the emotions a little more. Or like in every so often, like, you know, having to, like checking, you know, what you're feeling. Like, what am I feeling right now? Or, you know, or, or, or again, or asking yourself, like, why am I doing a certain task? Am I doing that because I feel like doing it? Because that's also, in essence, tied to, you know, getting emotional intelligence. Like, do I feel like doing this or am I doing this because of some thought or idea that I should be doing this and I really don't feel like doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like, what do you really feel? You know, it's like the, the key aspect. Again, with the... 
the suppression of emotions. You know, we're not, you know, we're being like a robot whenever we're suppressing our emotions. You know, a robot, you know, like Siri always talks to you like this. Or Alexa always talks to you in this voice. I have no emotions because I'm just a robot. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to, you know, be no robots, you know, in that sense of it. Definitely want to express emotions. And again, and have a, you know, an understanding of our emotions and being balanced with our emotions. Not, again, everything is about balance as well. You know, not being, uh, not letting our emotions run us and at the same time not suppressing our emotions either. You know? Like that's the whole aspect of tapping into that energy. You know, it's connecting with the emotions. You know, matter of fact, working with prayer night, epidote and prayer night is a, uh, you know, one that really comes to mind from my experience. You know, it was like bringing up those emotions you know, for anybody experience, you know, any like uh, emotional dissonance where you closing off your emotions and you still feeling them, you know, it's not like you closed off to your emotions and they, they're not there. When you suppress them so much, you just, you just, again, like you're throwing off your compass, like you've been ignoring the compass for so long, you don't even really know how to read a compass. You know, like you've been away from looking at a compass, you kind of don't really know you know, which way is north, south, east, or west, you know, in that sense of it. That's what our emotions telling us. Like, if you deal with a certain person, and that certain person give off an energy that you're not feeling, and it aggravates you, you know, you don't have to act like, you know, that that person is not making you feel some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? Like, it happens, you know? Because I realized for myself, like, the zen aspect it's to just not allow for my emotions to cause me to do something out of, you know, that's just crazy and wild out. But at the same time, express genuinely what I'm feeling that moment. Like, you know, I don't feel like talking about this, uh, you know, or uh, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? Like, let it be expressed, you know? And it's a constant work, you know, don't, don't feel like, uh, again, like lifting weights. This is, you know, lift up one weight one time and then just overnight I'm buff like I got all the muscles in the world just from lifting one dumbbell one time you know it's a, you know a constant uh you no know, getting in the habitual nature of you know working on this you know just constantly uh you know creating that new habit of being aware of your emotions and having that emotional intelligence you know but that's again connected with the divine feminine right now you know we we working on creating that divine marriage between the, the masculine and feminine within, you know, which will create the divine, you know, that divine alignment externally as well. So, you know, making sure we, we balanced in, in the way we deal with our masculine and feminine energies. You know, because especially men, you know, we've been taught to not cry and our emotions is for women and all this, and that's suppressing us and got us blocked up, you know, and. And then, not only with it being blocked up, then when it when it's time to express it, it's expressed in a manner, you know, those emotions come out in a manner where you're harming yourself and others, you know what I'm saying? Like doing something, you know, again, like, whether it's shooting up somebody or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know? And, and, and again, it's, it's now, we're becoming more and more accountable for having that awareness, you know, of knowing how to deal with ourselves, you know. Like, again, there's no savior outside of you. I could, I could make a video like this, but I can't, I'm not going to come in like, all right, now question yourself and see what your emotion is right now. You know, just like I don't have nobody doing that for me, you know, like I'm, again, like I always say, you know, I'm constantly, you know, uh, working on myself, you know, it's like, uh, it doesn't stop. You know, it's not like, oh, I balance my chakras now and forever. Oh, I balance my emotions now and forever. You just become more and more, you know, uh, intelligent, more and more efficient at doing so, you know what I'm saying, to where it's not so much of a task, you know, but it's still something that, you know, that is worked on, you know, it's like, you know, making sure we maintain a certain level of balance within our being. 
you know, balancing the mind, body, and soul, not confusing our body, because our mind saying one thing, soul saying another thing, you know what I'm saying? And the body is just like in between, you know, getting all fatigued, you know, and tired because it's going through this split energy. Like imagine if you was in the middle of a tug of war or somebody putting on each one of your limbs, you know? Matter of fact, that, that was a form of torture at one time. So think about it, you know, as an energetic expression, you know, same thing. And again, with the imagination, like the imagination is very key. Our ability to visualize things, you know, like that's what made Nikola Tesla, you know, so great at coming up with his, uh, you know, uh, his experiments and the things he was doing was, you know, how, how tapped in his imagination was. Like he could visualize things very vividly, you know, and, and hence, besides the, you know, the, the popular culture aspect of, oh, the third eye, man, gotta have the third eye open, stay woke. But you know, it is again about being tapped in and having that, that, that inner vision, that inner sight, you know, and really being able to, uh, again, imagine, imagine things on a vivid level and see things on a vivid level, you know, as much as possible when we're doing visualizations to see, taste, touch, feel, whatever it is we're visualizing to the fullest, you know. And again, when we start to visualize, we also have, you know, a certain emotion behind it. And, and this is all, again, tied into the subconscious mind as well, you know, because subconsciously, you know, whatever beliefs we have subconsciously, you know, that, uh, that causes a certain feeling as well, you know. Because if I believe that Jesus is real, let's just say, when somebody say Jesus not, that brings up an emotion like, that makes me feel uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's do, you know, you got a certain subconscious belief, you know, that, that causes you to feel a certain kind of way when somebody says or does something, you know, in a certain manner, you know, and that again, connected to your subconscious, you know, you're watching a movie and, you know, a certain person does something and it make you feel some kind of way, you know, due to, again, some type of, uh, subconscious perspective that you have you know first and foremost and again like these are key factors like again uh, knowing ourselves to the fullest like you know knowing you know where did I come from in order to know where I'm going you know and what 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 am I gonna do now to simultaneously hear my past and create my future you know Again, not going too far in the past, not going too far in the future, you know, in the real sense of it, like, you know, like being in the moment, like the, the present, you know, like a present or a gift, you know, is the present moment. The, the, the main component is now, you know, the present moment is the main component, <laughs> you know, because again, this, this moment, you could change all kind of stuff like generational curses and all that be healed in your now moment just depends on what you know what you're doing in your now moment and speaking to emotions uh in the aspect of also like triggers like we feel certain ways about certain things are we triggered you know certain situations people places or things or situations trigger us into a certain emotion you know and that's also again like a uh Like again, like a symbol, or uh, like the compass, like is is giving us, you know, uh, it's allowing for us to see what's going on in our subconscious. Because again, like I know that if I see a black and a white person uh, together as a couple walking down the street, and that makes me feel mad, then you know I know subconsciously that I'm still, you know races in some way, form, or fashion on either side of it, whether you're a black person races or a white person races, you know, like having some type of problem, you know, with certain situations, you know, 
that's a deeper, you know, aspect. And, and as I say that, realizing, you know, again, like it's all right for people to hate as well. You know, like again, like realizing like all emotions, all all expressions are valid. You know, they serve its purpose, you know what I'm saying? So uh, for the KKK or, or uh, whatever, whatever uh, you know, group of peoples that, you know, hate other people, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, it's all right to hate. Now on, now on a bigger scale of things are like, should I say, like it's about understanding why do you hate a situation and, and seeing that it's all right to hate but again i'm not gonna hate to the point where like all right let me go put my hands on this person or let me go hang them from a tree or you know or create laws and a society that you know just basically kills this person like nah you know it's more so like i could hate this situation person place or thing but I'm not gonna, you know, try to harm it because I dislike it or hate it, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's the whole thing, you know, understanding that that hate, you know, too, is like a, like, again, uh, almost like a, a love in essence, too. And, and hate, and hate, and a lot of times is like a fear of something that you don't, you know, understand. I think about little children, like, they always make me laugh when the little, ch little kid be like, I hate eating this, or I hate eating that. You ate it before? No. <laughs> like, never even ate the food before, but they hate that fucking food, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate that kind of food. Well, you, you had this before? No. Well, look, try some first before you say you dislike some or you hate this food or whatever. Like, at least try to see if you really hate it. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, some people, we didn't have past lives and stuff like this. So we, you know, and we may be in strong remembrance of like, all right. Yeah, like I done had that food already. <laughs> and I'm not too fine. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not one of my favorite dishes, you know? But, you know, that's the, the whole aspect of things, you know, again. I think I'm gonna catch a good seat. Wait. Like just again, staying tapped into the emotions, tapped into your imagination, you know, understanding the subconscious. You know, uh, and again, uh, looking for objective truth. You know, not just like like looking for objective truth, looking looking for facts. You know, like understanding the facts of this reality, you know, instead of, you know, like so much, uh, again, on subjective truth, you know, where it could be subjective uh, to somebody's perception or things of this nature. More so, you know, what's the objective truth of being in this reality, you know? And again, like, you know, what, why why am I here in this lifetime? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? You know, and for us to be, you know, solution oriented, like what's the solution to this? All right, we, we talk this, we talk that, but what's, what's the solutions? You know, being clear in our intentions and not having expectations, you know, no agenda, no preconceived notion of how it's gonna come about, you know, just, you know, trusting that, all right, as I set this intention, you know, I visualize this and I, you know, as I visualize it, I feel it vividly, set the intention, and then I leave it alone and, you know, and see it as already done, you know. But, uh, the whole aspect, again, like just really dealing with the, the real, real important aspects of our spiritual transformation. Again, application, applying what we learn it, you know, and not just be, you know, being able to repeat things that we hear, you know, but more so, you know, if we are repeating things that we hear, it's because we have applied it, 
and it works for us so we're sharing it you know for others to you know uh, apply it as well you know and not just going in some you know uh, masculine logical little brand of information like I know this I know that you know because again it's all about applied information like you know going within and, and really creating some transformation you know transmuting that past life trauma that inner child trauma like really sitting with ourselves you know, a past life uh, trauma again uh, healing the inner father healing the inner mother healing the past life I mean uh, inner child aspect you know and really sitting there and doing like a psychologist with yourself like where did this start like the first time you know I ever felt like this like where did this come from you know like when was the first time I smoked herb and why did I smoke herb? Did I do it because it was cool? Did I do it because I saw my mom and dad smoke cigarettes? You know, like all those different things helps for you to get to know yourself to the fullest because again, that's the most important aspect is, you know, knowing thyself, like knowing ourselves to the fullest. And that's where the magic at because when we know ourselves to the fullest, AKA tapped into our emotional intelligence as well. You know, we tapped into the emotional intelligence you know, we tapping into understanding ourselves to the fullest, you know, then we, uh, you know, we have these synchronistic experiences or quote unquote manifestations due to being in alignment with who we truly are. So we lined up, you know, uh, with things happening in our favor on a higher level because we're, you know, we're being ourselves to the fullest. That's the whole, again, like with the moon, the triple moon goddess, Hakate, or any expression of a, you know, a triple moon goddess or uh, uh, somebody connection with the moon and connection with magic, you know, that that's because, again, like the, the moon energy is in connection, you know, with, you know, the waters, the intuition, you know, the dreams, you know, because what we deal with in lucid dreaming is also, you know, uh, manifested in the physical as well you know uh again the dreams intuition the emotions you know the subconscious mind you know which in essence you know uh you know what you're dreaming about is all dealing with what's in your subconscious you know the subconscious mind on autopilot you know, it, it, it already, you know, it just goes and creates off of what's plugged in it. So it's working through, you know, like plugging things into your subconscious. You know, it works through uh, symbols, you know, uh, through repetition and through trauma, you know. And there's other aspects, you know, uh, or should I say different more like more detailed aspects of you know how you go about the repetition and working with symbols and the trauma aspect you know because again you could do sim uh sigil sigil mask sigil magic you know and then sigil magic actually has like the symbol aspect and not necessarily trauma but like say for instance when you're doing sigil magic you should like create like a like when you're staring at the sigil create like a sensation of energy whether it be pain or pleasure you know whether it could be like stretching and then coming out of a stretch and then looking at your sigil or you know or uh having sex you know and uh and looking at your sigil as you're having an orgasm you know but uh you know in essence that's kind of like a, a trauma aspect mixed with symbol but and again realizing more and more that these things are real like you know, uh, you're not just, oh, this is just some old crazy shit, or, you know, it's like, you know, it's all, uh, again, it's all real, and, and, your, and it's all about your magic, you know, like doing magic, or should I say what we call magic, again, for lack of a better word, you know, it's also built upon what you feel is magic, you know, like say, for instance, I could be wearing, when I put on my moss agate bracelet, that's for me to talk to the tree. Like, every time I put on moss agate, I'm a, 
talk to trees that day and somebody gonna give me some fruit, let's just say. And that's what that magic is for me with this bracelet. I give this bracelet to somebody else, that's not gonna be the same thing for them, you know? They might not even program the bracelet for magic or they know about magic but they program it for something else but again like it's it's your own magic it's your own subconscious mind it's your own quote-unquote belief system you know what i'm saying like again we are creators of gods you know like the 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 god in essence you know that's why it's like you know when we really talk about source energy like the, the you know like what some would really call god in essence is unnameable it's like you know it's it's you know again the best i feel i could do in con connecting with that name is saying source energy you know what i'm saying because again it has no beginning or end and it's you know and it's no thing which in essence allows for it to be all things as well you know but gods gods are again like little things we create again due to our magic you know, and us being accountable at the fact that we do create, you know, gods, you know. Like you create a god of, you know, of munchies. Where every time you smoke, you always have the munchies. And then that, that, that entity, first it kind of, you know, in essence an entity. But then it becomes a god as you continuously worship. Where every time you smoke, you're worshiping that god by giving in to the munchies on a high level. And, and, and as you continuously do that you'll feel like, again, like this, uh, like you're nicking or something, like after you smoke, like it's like, bro, I gotta just go ham, like on, on this food, even though you might not even be hungry. Let's just say, you know, showing you really how much it is, like just an energetic, you know, uh, entity, you know, looking to eat, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with a smoking habit or a drinking habit, you know? And even, even uh, again, like pleasurable habits as well, you're creating a God or entity, you know? Because that's another thing too, like it's just creating, you know, creating things that are beneficial and healthy to your alignment, you know what I'm saying? Instead of things that aren't. But you're creating some type of, you know, again, some type of uh, entity or God in some way, form or fashion, you know? Hence why, again, these, these gods like Zeus and, and the stories of, I think it was Clash of the Titans. Not stories, but movies. Uh, uh, what I was going to say, I was going to try to say something else. But, uh, yeah, with the aspect of, you know, again, the what they call a demiurge or the archon energy. You know, the gods that were created in this realm, you know. Because again, if this realm is, you know, uh, how can I say? Like if duality only exists within this realm and all these things come from being in this realm, then that means these gods are from this realm. Like, because what all our emotions, you know, the emotion or the vibe of feeling like I want to war all the time, you know? Like I feel like I want to go at war all the time. I feel like you know, the energy of wealth, or I feel the, you know, the the vibration of destruction, you know, all all those polarities in essence comes from being in this realm, in this reality. So, you know, again, and that's facts, you know, in the sense of, you know, we create with our words and our thoughts and with our focus. So again, and, and by being created I mean, by being connected to the primordial source energy, you know, again, we, we have that ability to create, you know, these energies, these entities. But again, like jealousy, uh, hate, or love, and passion, you know, art, music, that's all shit, you know, so when we talk about the gods of music, the god of art, the god of hunting, you know, that's all shit we created, you know what I'm saying? Think about that. There ain't no God that created us. The God of hunting didn't create nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you know, uh, again, that primordial source energy that everything comes from that's within our little human body suits. 
that allows for us to be creators of these other gods, you know, these younger gods. Because even the quote unquote old gods, like let's say what we call like Zeus, Papa Legba, Baron Samdi, you know, all these different little deities, again, it's not for us to worship because we created them. And, and, and what I really realized is like the, the gods that you resonate or the certain deities you resonate with, that's because that's the God that you created. Like you, in some way, form or fashion, your oversoul slash soul, you know, uh, has a hand in creating that entity or had a hand in creating that, and let's just say has a hand in creating that entity, you know, at, at one point, you know, of your reality. You know, I created Papa Legba, you know, and not the other way around. But about to catch this bus, y'all. Peace, peace.